2012, question two. And this is, and I know you guys hate it, but an experimental design. Uh, just because we're doing the C that focuses more on calculations doesn't mean experimental design isn't something that uh, you need to do. So you still need to do experimental design, and everything that we talked about still holds true. Now, um, this is one of the very common ways that if they do an experimental design, this is pretty much how they're going to start it off, by saying, um, pick which pieces of uh, equipment that you need. So what I would do is I would actually start in part B. I would start part B, and every time you have to make mention of a of a item, you come back here and you check it off. Uh, for the most part, they said that the two things that you have to make sure you do is you need a meter stick and a stopwatch. Everything else doesn't really, I mean, they do matter because it really depends. But those are two things that no matter how you set up your uh, experiment, you have to have a meter stick and a stopwatch. All right. So let's see, what are some of the other things that you can use? Um, all right, so you want to find out uh, potential to kinetic. All right, so not only do we need that, let's say we need uh, carts. Uh, we need a balance, let's say that. Let's do, um, I'll do what they did, a Atwood machine, or modified Atwood. So this is the setup. I want a pulley. That. And that. Wow. I pretty much got everything but the track. All right. Um, all right, so let's see. Now let's set up the actual, exp so let's see, outline a procedure, uh, include which measurements. Now again, we want to do procedure, not analysis. So I'm just talking about what data needs to be collected and how that data needs to be collected. I'm not going to talk about anything else of that. So first off, it wants a diagram. So I'll use the same diagram I did before. Cart. Pulley, mass, string. There we go. Uh, we got it. We got it. All right. Now let's see. I want to start off by measuring Measuring the mass of the cart and mass of hanging using balance record as MC and MH respectively. All right. So not only did I tell them what I wanted to measure, but I also told them how to record it. Now, I know this isn't something that I've really focused much on in class, but you really should get into the habit of telling the person how it should be recorded, especially if you have multiple things, like if you have multiple masses going on. Um, and it just makes life easy, especially because you can then use just MC later on. All right. Um, uh, attach MC and MH using string. Uh, place string over pulley. All right, so I did that. Um, oh, place string over pulley. 
and have MH hang freely. Alright, there we go. Um, so I have it all set up. Now what I can do is I could figure out um, measure height each of Actually, let me rewrite that. Forgive my spelling and um, my lack of sp specifics, but like I said, I'm writing on a with a stylus, so it's a little bit hard. Inch above ground. using meter stick and record as each. Alright. Um, use stopwatch to Measure time. Of fall. Record as T. And though I don't really think it matters too much, only because they say it, um, measure height of table record as each so now I have two different uh, heights two different masses alright um, there you go um, do do do, and I got everything. Now, actually, they do say right here use the symbol of e for each measurement, so you know you have to make sure that you put this MH and MC. All right, and I think that that's pretty much good. Uh, this was four points, so you got one point for making measurements that could be used to find. Uh, the gravitational potential energy, so basically this, measuring height. Um, you got one point, uh, maybe this is the potential energy, but you got one point for measuring height and time, so uh, yeah, you have that, and then let's see, for a diagram and a clear indication of the height measurement, Alright, so technically, it says that on the diagram, they wanted you to write um, w the different heights. So, saying that this is the height of the mass, and that oh, this was height H, and you got one point for both of those. Actually, one point each for both of those. So, this was four points. Um... And that was basically it. Not really the... Yeah, not really the best of questions. Alright. Now what they want to do is they want us to explain how to actually do... Um, yeah. They want us to actually explain the, the calculations. Now, one of the things I want to mention is that another way that you could have done this is instead of doing an Atwood machine, you could have made a ramp and had a cart go down it like that. That probably would have, might have been easier. Um, right. So, what you need to do is you need to 
basically explain uh, these are the points. Find the initial potential energy using MC GH plus MH GH. Find the final gravitational potential energy, so UG equals MC GH. You know, since uh, in the R example with the cart and the mass, the mass falls all the way, but this uh, the cart still stays on the um, on the table. Now I know it might seem redundant to do it since the height doesn't change. Why even make measurements? But you know you just want to put it. Um, the initial kinetic energy. Well, since everything starts at zero, then the kinetic energy initially is zero, but afterwards. The kinetic energy is not only in the block, but in but in the cart as well. So you end up having one half mc plus mh. Oh, my uh, plus v squared. All right, and then um, well, we need to figure out how what the velocity is, since you know we can't prove that this is true without finding what the velocity is. So you have to say that um, the block, uh, yeah, so because A equals a constant, I can say that the average velocity equals D over T. So that means that V uh, plus V0 over 2 equals DT. Oh. D over T. V over 2 equals D over T since it starts at rest. So VF equals 2 D T and it falls a distance of 2 H T. Alright. Um, and that's how, that's what you do. So you have to make mention of that. Um, you got one point for this. One point for this, one point for this, one point for this, and then you got two points for this. So, uh, if you didn't find out this way, you could have found acceleration like other ways. Like, for example, you can use the annoying x equation. find acceleration and then plugging that into a uh, timeless equation or v equals v0 plus at or into vf squared plus, uh, equals v0 squared plus 2ad. Either way it would have worked. Or even actually doing um, f net equals ma and then saying MHG equals MC plus MH A again solving for A and using it in either equation so you know there's multiple ways that you could have found the acceleration and that's why it's worth so many points um, and that's basically it like I said the the way you do it really depends on the problem if you did it this way the setup would probably be a lot easier but the same thing holds true, that you talk about what's, what was the total initial potential energy, what was the total final potential energy, what's the total initial kinetic, what's the total final kinetic, and how can we find the final speed. All right? And that's why it's worth six points. All right, now here it says, your calculations show that energy increased during the experiment. So that means, and there's no mathematical errors. So can't say, oh, well, there's mathematical errors. So that basically means that the object is going faster than what we expect. So we put in some initial potential, but for some reason, our kinetic is higher than it should. So this object is moving too fast. All right. Um, now, there's multiple ways that a uh, reason why there, it might go faster. Like, for example... Um, 
if you think about it, the change in potential should equal the final kinetic energy. The only way for this to be higher is if something on this side was higher. So, you know, maybe there was some additional work put in. So, uh, initial push applied to the cart. Uh, giving it initial kinetic uh, another thing could be that it's uh, the table is sloped downwards so that means that uh, gravity is doing work so again, kind of saying that we it's either we might have accidentally applied a force onto it or um, the t table might be sloped like this. So not only is um, so not only is gravity doing work on this object, but gravity is also doing work on this object, or that this object also has some change in potential that we're not taking into account. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that could explain uh, an initial, uh, yeah, since they said that they don't want you to talk about uh, mathematical errors making mistakes or making mistakes with measurements. Um, right. And that was two points. Um, so, realizing a proper explanation and then why a proper reason and why. So table sloped was one point allowing gravity to add in uh, initial energy is the other point. And the last one uh, they want to show that the energy decreased so it's going slower than we would normally think. All right, That means that we've lost more energy than we should have. Again, no mathematical errors. Um, include references to conservative and non-conservative forces. Alright, uh, that... I know I never really talked about what conservative and non-conservative means, but um, that just really talks about whether or not the... the force on it is path dependent kind of sort of so like conservative force would be something like gravity is a conservative force uh, the normal force is conservative but um, friction is a non-conservative force that's pretty much what it means uh, for the most part it basically means that when that force is uh, taken into account that it allows for conservation of energy um, you can look up what the formal definition is but for the most part you know, it's, it's really just a term that they tend to throw around. So, the easiest way is saying that there's friction involved. Um, you might also be able to say something like um, the pulley has rotational inertia slash friction on it that we didn't take into account. Um, and that could also say that uh, some of the energy gets put into um, rotational kinetic um, let's see, what else could you say? You could say that maybe the table sloped backwards. So instead of it being sloped downwards like before, maybe the table sloped like this. Um, but I think those are the three that I can think of. And for the most part, the reasoning is still the same. That, there, uh, that it takes away how much energy goes into kinetic. So, again, you got one point for coming up with the reason and then one point for a proper explanation of basically that some of the energy is being taken away 
from the kinetic and put into someone else. All right. Uh, again, if you have any questions, let me know. I'll go over these problems and keep practicing.